Welcome to Freedio Hub. Today on the course on ethical hacking, we'll be covering wireless vulnerabilities. Now we know wireless is everywhere in terms of wireless connections or 4G or 5G communications if we are connected through our uh, mobile or we are using the internet which is provided by the cellular companies. Now it's very popular because uh, we have lots of devices these days which are connecting to the internet using the wireless communications etc and it saves us from the hassle of all the wires and everything which is associated with the typical network. However, the security of the wireless technology remains a concern due to the poor security features and adoption without proper understanding. This chapter will explore uh, various ways how can we uh, make our wireless technology more secure by using encryption, authentication and other features which will uh, strengthen the environment and with the right knowledge and effort wireless networks can be more secure and business needs not to fear use uh, while using the uh, wireless technology. So the uh, main things that we'll be covering in this chapter would be in the key concepts, importance of wireless security, history of technologies and ways to work uh, with and secure short range wireless uh, networks. Uh, now ways to work with the wireless lo local area networks as well. Then we look at the threats which are associated with wireless NANs and the Internet of Things how we are connecting Internet of Things to the wireless and what should be the security protocols for that. And then we'll look at the wireless hacking tools which are available and protection of wireless networks. Now, um, if we talk about the learning objectives, we'll identify the information systems and network vulnerabilities and threats. We'll explain the significance of wireless security. We'll try to understand the reasons behind wireless security uh, and why we should uh, make sure that they are secure. We'll be understanding the security issues with mobile and remote devices. Uh, and we cannot forget the importance of Bluetooth, but um, we look at it in the perspective that uh, it should be secure while we are communicating to Bluetooth devices. Uh, we look at the wireless NAN and how they work and describe the threats of the wireless LANs. Then we list different types of wireless hacking tools and understand how to defend the wireless networks. Now, first of all, uh, uh, let's try to understand the importance of a wireless security. Wireless communication and networking technologies have been rapid growth. Uh, had a rapid growth and adoption over the past two decades because now um, in the starting we had very slow internet connection most of the people were using dial-up connections uh, uh, the where we were relying heavily on the uh, cell on the uh, telephone lines which is the PBX telephone exchanges but then we had uh, uh, GSM and CDMA and then uh, gradually we moved toward the wireless communications um, started from 2G and then 3G and then we had uh, um, 4 and 4.5 and now we are using even the 5G cellular networks for the uh, fast communication on the internet. Now businesses and consumers have adopted wireless technologies for their ability to allow users to be more mobile and um, unencrumbled uh, by wires because the biggest problem in most of the buildings is that we have lots of wires which are running around in the building um, so that we have um, the uh, network inside the building. Now uh, first of all it's expensive. Second thing is that uh, after a couple of years you'll have to change the wiring. Uh, third thing is that it carries a lot of weight inside the structure of a building where all these cables are um, uh, deployed at different areas just to provide the network capability. Additional adapters uh, uh, um, have taken to the technology because it can allow connections to computers in areas where wires cannot reach and would be expensive to install. For example, if you have some open areas in the shed, in the warehouses, etc., and if it is difficult to pull cables all the way to the um, the outskirts of the uh, of the industry or the company itself, the wireless is the only solution where we can have a wireless capability, and uh, people will be able to enjoy the services provided by internet. Now, the security is still a concern that if it is a wireless network, it would be prone to any sort of attacks which people can use and they'll try to compromise the security of wireless networks. All it takes to a potentially compromise an entire network is to allow insufficient hardening wireless devices to connect to your network. So if you don't have the pro pro protocols in order to protect your wireless network, uh, there are high chances that your network would be compromised. 
Next we have emanations and uh, in emanations wireless networks usually use the radio frequency for the transmission uh, and that's the technique used um, on which they rely for the instead of relying on the traditional wires which is both a strength and a weakness now it allows for connectivity in all directions but also allow anyone um, in those directions to eavesdrop the connections unlike the traditional media wireless signals can be easily picked up by anyone with the devices making it important to implement additional security measures to address these vulnerabilities. Now, wireless network use the radio frequency for the transmission technique, etc., and the signal travel through the air can easily be picked by the laptop or any wireless card. And then we have different emanations of wireless network that can be affected. For example, the atmospheric conditions. If it's warm or cold, it would affect the signal strength because um, the changes in the air density that is uh, changing in the temperature, etc., would cause these signals to drop as well. Then we have building material, material surrounding uh, and excess points such as the metal, brick, stone um, or any sort of concrete structure would also affect the signal strength. Now nearby devices, other devices in the area, for example microwave ovens to um, way radios and mobile phones or um, if we have uh, huge towers, uh, communication towers from the companies, they can also interfere with the signals of wireless. After that, we have common support and availability. Um, Bluetooth and wireless are commonly in um, laptops, tablets, um, and the devices, etc., smart sensors, etc., smart devices, and smart appliances. Uh, we have Wi Fi, uh, that is the trademark that was introduced in 1999 and it's owned by Wi-Fi Alliance. It's used to uh, brand wireless technologies that confirm to a 2.11 standard. So whenever we are discussing the wireless communications, you'll have to keep in mind the a 2.11 standard. To bear in Wi-Fi logo, a product must pass testing procedures to ensure that it meets the basic requirements of a 2.11 because the device uses the standard does not mean that the Wi-Fi uh, it may have to undergo testing. Uh, so it's a standard that all companies shall uh, be following in order to make sure um, that they are complying with the international standards. Now we have a brief history of wireless technologies, Institute of Electron Electrical and Electronic Engineers, 82.11 family of standards. The main important thing in this one is you must keep an eye on the uh, standard 82.11 A, B, G, N, A, C and A, X. This alphabet after 82.11 represents the speed uh, which this specific router or modem would be able to carry. Now, as you can see in A2 2.11a, it can have a bandwidth of 54 Mbps. Uh, for B, it's only 11. Again, for G, it's 54 Mbps. And then for N, it goes up to 600 Mbps. If you are take or buying a router which uh, has the capability of A2 2.1ac, you'll be able to reach the speed of 450 on 2.4 gigahertz and 1300 Mbps on 5 gigahertz. Now, this is not 5G connection as we have the latest technology. It's 5 gigahertz on which it would be transmitting the signals. A to 2.11 AX is capable to carry 9.6 gigabits per second. Now, the frequency of it is uh, um, in 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So, you must buy a router or a device which is capable to run both frequencies because sometimes it happens that you have an older device, a tablet or a smartphone which is not capable to run 5 gigahertz so you'll not be able to connect to the internet on that one. The difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz is the throughput. For example on 5 gigahertz you'll get an excellent speed but the range of the signals for 5 gigahertz would be quite limited. Whereas on 2.4 gigahertz you, give, you get a reasonably good speed and the benefit of it is that you can uh, get the signals of 2.4 gigahertz even at the remote areas of your house. So if it's about the signal strength and if you want to reach the distance locations or distant locations, you'll go for 2.4 gigahertz. If you are in nearby vicinity and you want to get an excellent speed, you will go for 5 gigahertz. 
Now we'll briefly go through the technologies and a little bit about their history of it. 802.1 was, was the first wireless standard that saw the major uh, usage and the outside the custom deployment. It was used for large companies and educational institutions who could afford the equipment training and implementation. That was the initial stages when we had the wireless. Then 802.11b came. It was introduced two years after 802.11. This is the first widely adopted wireless technology which came in the devices performance was increased significantly as compared to the previous variant. Then we had 802.11G, a standard combines the best of 802.11A and B, like the previous two standards. It was a completely uh, overall product and it, the standard was higher in the bandwidth. For example, it could reach up to 54 Mbps combined with 2.4 GHz frequency that allows the greater range and backward compatibility with 802.11 but not 802.11A. Wireless network adapters that use 802.11b standards are compatible with 802.11g access points as well. Then we had 802.11a. The standard was created in parallel to 802.11b but was never a widespread adoption because of its high cost and restricted range. Then we had 802.11n. Um, the successor of A2 2.11g, the standard used the method of transmission the signals known to multiple input and output. You might have seen MIMO written at different places, can transmit multiple signals across multiple antennas. Uh, so that was the time when we saw the access points with multiple antennas on it. A2 2.11 standard offered back to compatibility to uh, A2 2.11g. Then we had 802.11 AC, also called 555. Since we had 5 GHz in this one, this standard increased the wireless communication speed and reliability by using the connection in 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz at the same time. The bandwidth uh, is up to 1300 Mbps and 5 GHz band and 450 Mbps on 2.4 gigahertz. Then we had 802.11 AX also called Wi-Fi 6. The standard builds the advanced 802.0 AC the offering the fast transmission rates uh, using less power and being more reliable in the congested environment. So if it was clogged with lots of other wireless networks 802.11 AX would perform better in that. 802.11 AX support better security for wireless connection. Bandwidth went up to 9.6 gigabits per second and dual frequencies of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Then other variants of 802.11 are there are continual improvements in 802.11 protocol standard changes include the frequency use bandwidth range and the technical data. Current variants review can be viewed in search like if you'll search for IEEE 802.11 standard variants you'll be able to find all this information over there as well. Now there were lots of other wireless technologies which were used among those Bluetooth was the uh, one which was a successor of it or it came along the wireless technologies. Now it was designed for a short range networking technology that connects devices just like smartphones and other medical equipment which needed to be connected to the main platforms. Connections allow the devices to talk over the distance for no more than 10 meters in width. Like uh, if the uh, other device is at a distance of 10 meters maximum that's the range of it in which you can connect the uh, Bluetooth devices a personal area network technology that allows the mobile devices to connect to the accessories etc. You might have seen different keyboard, mouse and smartwatches etc which is using the personal area network at the moment. Then we had Bluetooth Low Energy, a more useful version of Bluetooth that requires less energy to operate. So the only difference in that one that it was consuming less energy as compared to a normal Bluetooth. Then we had Vimex. It's designed to deliver internet across over the last mile to the home or business that might not be able to get the access otherwise. It can cover up to 13 miles in practice. Range is 10 miles um, are more than enough. And then the metropolitan area network technology was used in this one. Now we look at the security of wireless networks working with the security of Bluetooth like Bluetooth emerged in uh, mid 1990s is flexible works well to the links devices wirelessly and has problems with the security but supports uh, techniques that enforce the security and make enabled devices less vulnerable. 
Now some of the Bluetooth uses were, it is a connection between the mobile phones and hands-free handset devices and earpieces etc. Uh, like we are using earpods, wireless mice and keyboards, global positioning system, replacement for infrared which you, we used to have long time ago in that we had to literally connect two devices together head to head in order to transfer the things. A supplement to a universal serial bus which is a USB and a uh, wireless bridging and wireless modem etc. Even we are using it for video game consoles and even the wireless modems. Now we look at the Bluetooth security. What are the main features that we must be concerned about? The technology is designed to include some security features. Presence of security option is a product does not mean that those options are always used. Owners and administrators should always review the security options and evaluate them how to apply that what kind of wireless uh, or Bluetooth settings you must have whether it should be always in the searchable mode or not or once it's associated it should not show it should not show the other users that a uh, Bluetooth device is available trusted devices uh, devices that can exchange data without asking for permissions because they are already trusted to do so so once the uh, it is trusted it will be able to transfer the things just like when you connect your smartphone to your car um, entertainment system it asks you that if you want to sync the contacts once it is trusted it will be able to search in the contacts and if a call is coming it would show you the name of the person who's calling as well Personal devices such as your phone, mobile, tablets, etc. Company devices such as printer, wireless environment and monitoring devices can be connected using the uh, Bluetooth technology as well. Now just keep in mind the difference between the trusted devices and untrusted devices. An untrusted device is one that is not under the immediate control of an individual or company such as a public device or unknown owners are operating those devices. The concept of trusted devices requires expl explicit permission or approval before connecting to prevent the unauthorized access to the system. When you are using a Bluetooth enabled devices it is important to only connect to the devices that are known and trusted and the user should avoid connecting to unknown devices it is critical to educate users um, about the difference between the trusted and untrusted devices to emphasize um, that the unsolicited connections uh, request uh, should never be accepted otherwise through these connections they'll be able to take the data which is saved on your devices now we look at the Bluetooth security. Discoverability uh, features is a part of the Bluetooth protocol. It enables the devices to be seen by other Bluetooth devices. Attackers can attack, uh, uh, attach the Bluetooth devices to steal the data. Devices should be uh, set to non-discoverable mode and uh, as a default. Now if your device is always available to be scanned on the network, anyone on the network will be able to scan your device and then they can use the rogue techniques in order to penetrate in your device so much so that once they are penetrated in the device they'll be able to make calls copy your contents um, search in your directory um, uh, the pictures which are available on your mobile phone so they can control the device remotely so much so that they'll be even able to send messages and make calls from your mobile device after that in blue uh, in bluetooth security we have different things like uh, blue jacking blue snarfing and uh, blue bugging blue jacking allows someone uh, authorized or unauthorized to send messages to a mobile device uh, blue snarfing used to steal the data from the mobile enabled devices and blue bugging attackers uh, where the attacker used the device being attacked for more than just accessing the data like making calls and sending the text messages etc as i told you earlier then we have uh, different viruses and malwares etc which, um, uh, for which we must secure our Bluetooth connections as well. Now viruses leverage the discoverability feature to locate and infect the nearby devices. Mobile malware is lucrative business where they'll be able to get the uh, data from your mobile phone. Since uh, mobile phones are quite personal and people are using it for a variety of purposes so that's the main target of most of the attackers who are looking for any known vulnerabilities in these devices. Traditional PC anti malware software um, now produce uh, uh, mobile versions of their products so that they can scan and they can detect if someone is illegally trying to access your device through the uh, Bluetooth technology. Now se securing the Bluetooth, Bluetooth makers uh, provide tools to use the technology safe disable discoverability once you have established pairing between these two devices always helps you in making sure that you are communicating on a secure network. 
Now, whenever we are talking about wireless NANs, the things that would come to our mind would be uh, CSMA or CSMA-CA or role of access points, SSID, which is the service set identifier, associ association with the AP, with the access point, authentication, and for the authentication, we use radius servers, which is a built-in facility in Microsoft Windows Server, and then network setup and options, just like if we set up an ad hoc network or a infrastructure network. Now we'll try to see these things one by one, that what are they, CSMA versus the CSMA CA. The difference is CD and CA. In the network based on the Ethernet standard 802.3 station transmission information, using the carrier sense um, uh, multiple access with the collision detection, so it is uh, even detecting the collision which is happening on the same network. Wireless network based on 802.11 standard use the carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. So the difference between them is one is collision detection, the other one is collision avoidance. The network that uses the collision um, avoidance listens to see whether any other station is transmitting before it transmits the signal. So it would see the actual channel on which the signals are being transmitted. If there is a signal already available on that channel, it would transmit it on a different channel. This looked like both ways before crossing the street. So um, it want to make sure that the signals that would be transmitted by it shall not be interfered or um, it should have uh, no interference in it to have uh, maximum capacity, throughput and reliability of the connection. After that, we'll see all these things separately as uh, the association with an access point, service set identifier, and role of an access point. Now, in association with an access point, association occurs when a wireless client has the SSID, which is the, your wireless network name, pre-configured for the network. It is supposed to be attached to the uh, association, must take place before the wireless client can connect to the wireless network. So you'll not be able to connect unless and until uh, you'll be able to establish connection with that. Association is a process by which a wireless client connect to the wireless network using a pre-configured SSID which we define. Authentication is an important step that should be performed before association to ensure that only authorized clients can connect to the network. This can be done using either by an open key which uh, uh, will allow only the persons who have the uh, key or the password in order to connect. Uh, um, that would be an encrypted form or a pre-shared uh, key which we say as PSK um, which involves both the access point uh, and the client having the same key entered ahead of time so that they can have a communication between them. Service set identifier SSID are used to identify network ensuring that the clients can locate the correct wireless local area network. So we know that either we can hide or can show the wireless SSID. Turning off or uh, the broadcast of SSID can add an extra layer of security to your wireless network. When SSID broadcasting is turned off, the network will not be visible to any wireless device that is scanning for the available networks. This makes it more difficult for unauthorized users to find and connect to the network. However, it is uh, uh, to be noted that turning off the SSID broadcasting does not provide a complete security and determined uh, attackers can still discover the SSID through various means. Additionally, manually, um, if we are uh, connecting to a network requires the use to enter the SSID, which could be inconvenient for the users who are not familiar with the network name and uh, who frequently move between different wireless networks. Then we have role of access points. Now, wireless clients connect to access points to gain the access to the network. In addition to the type of capability of an access point, the physical placement of an access point can have a significant impact on the wireless network performance. Factors such as interference from the other wireless networks, walls, and other physical obstructions, and the number of clients accessing those ac access points can also affect the range and the signal strength of the network. Proper placement of these access points can help mitigate these issues and to improve the overall performance and reliability of the wireless network. Now we'll be looking at some of the authentication and radius uh, uh, servers like the authentication which takes place on it. The importance of authentication is before the association process takes place, authentication should be performed. Authentication can be accomplished through the open or pre-shared keys. 
Now, in working with Radius Remote um, Authentication Dial-in User Service is used to offload authentication to wireless users and to provide an additional layer of security in the absence of a network wires. Radius is designed to centralize the authentication, authorization, and accounting, which we say as AAA. Um, that can especially be useful in the large organizations where there are many wireless clients and it uh, allows them to centralize and to manage them on to control um, that uh, um, which access points they must have access and the network that they are capable to access um, uh, through uh, the radius server now radius can be used in conjunction with the other security such as the vpn or the firewall to provide the additional layer of protection for wireless clients and the network as a whole now we are looking at the network setup options. We have two different options, which is an ad hoc network and an infrastructure network. Now ad hoc network, a peer-to-peer -peer network in which each client can attach to any other client to send and receive the information can be set up quickly, but does not scale well. Now ad hoc networks are easy to quick and create because um, they do not require any access points. Uh, clients can connect to each other as nodes and from the network with the SSID called IBSS. However, these networks are not scalable and become less secure as the number of clients would increase. Then we have infrastructure network. Now infrastructure networks, networks that use an access point that each client associate, um, associates with infrastructure based wireless networks are the networks that uses the access point that each client associates with each client in the network will be configured to use the SSID of the access point that will be used to send and receive information. This type of network scales very well uh, compared to the ad hoc network and is much more likely to be used in the production environments. Additionally, infrastructure networks can scale to a larger degree by simply adding more access points to create an extended service set, which we say as ESS. Now we have threats to different wireless NANs. Now, first of all, we have threats to wireless networks is uh, while driving the process of an attacker traveling through an area with the goal of detecting the access points or devices similar to attack, including the war driving, for example, war biking, war flying and war running. Now, in this one, the uh, process is that uh, as they can access the devices and can scan it, the attacker can use the basic equipment such as laptop or mobile devices and software to detect the wireless signals. The attacker's goal maybe to gain free internet access or to carry out more uh, notorious activities such as accessing the computers on the network, spreading the malware, downloading illegal software, using someone else credentials on the network, etc. Then we have uh, misconfigured security settings. Most of the consumer grade devices are pre-configured for the convenience and or not security. All networks should be configured properly. So if you are getting an internet service uh, um, or the router from an internet service provider, you must uh, change the password as soon as you receive it because that's a standard password which is configured on those devices. So anyone else who's using the same service will have the same credentials to log into those devices. Unsecured wireless connections or unsecured connections transmitting the data over unsecured access points can be a problematic. Users who leave wireless access technology such as Bluetooth enabled or on the laptop or the mobile devices may be open to data theft and more. Now there are a number of other threats as well which are associated to the um, threats of the wireless network. And the first one is rogue access point. Rogue access points are installed without the authorization, etc. Rogue access points are installed without authorization. Rogue access points uh, bypass the organization security controls, leaving them unmanaged and unknown uh, and unsecured. So organization face the problem of unauthorized access points being installed, which are unmanaged, unknown or unsecured. Anyone can plug a cheap consumer grade access point into their desktop PC and create their own wireless network and bypass the organizational security controls. Rogue access points are frequently subject to little or no security which leads to unrestricted access to any party that locates that access point. Then we have promiscuous clients. Promiscuous clients are the access points that are configured to offer strong signals and to offer um, of uh, good performance as well. 
Further in promiscuous mode, they'll be able to uh, collect all the data which is intended for that machine or not. It means that you need a special wireless uh, access point or a, a wireless adapter which is a USB enabled and you'll be able to collect all the information or the traffic which is flowing on the network. So this is the technique usually used by the people who want to crack the wireless networks that they turn their um, wireless networks into a promiscuous mode and then they'll be able to capture all those things from the network. Wireless network viruses, wireless viruses replicate quickly because of the wireless network to jump from the system to system on the network. Now let's see what are the different ways in order to protect ourselves from these kind of problems, countermeasures to wireless LAN threats. First of all, firewalls shall be there in case of a roaming or remote uh, clients that connect to the wireless networks in the office or at the local coffee shop or at the airport, a good personal firewall can provide you a much needed level of protection. So that's the basic level of protection that you can have in order to protect yourself from any kind of interference and anyone is trying to access your information from the PC. Now the antivirus and anti-malware also, that plays an important role. Install an antivirus or anti-malware solution in every computer or the device to protect yourself from any latest viruses which are coming to the network. Then we have a virtual private network and a VPN is enhanced protection of high degree of encrypting all the traffic between the roaming clients and the company network. Um, that helps us in order to hide our identity. As you might have seen, I have posted a video on the channel in which I am using BetterCap in order to capture all the traffic of the computers who are on my network. So if you will turn on a VPN connection, it would encrypt the uh, communication and any person who is looking for an ARP attack will not be able to um, see that what you are actually doing on the network. Further training it plays an important role. Users should be informed to what um, they should and should not do on wireless network as well as on other areas. Um, the training is not only lim limited to that, they are even giving you training for the emails and phishing and what kind of uh, attachments you should be open and what kind of attachments you should not open and what are the ways in order to identify that the email is coming from a reputable source. Then we have internet protocol security. It uses the technologies such as IPsec, uh, which will uh, prevent information from being altered or viewed by the um, unauthorized parties or individuals on the network. Now in next one, we are going to talk about the internet of things. A network of devices that are connected via networking. In almost all cases, network is also connected to the internet. IoT devices on the network are accessible worldwide and smart devices, for example, lights, thermostats, security systems, video cameras, even the street lights these days are all connected to internet of things. Now, attackers can use these devices to penetrate on personal and corporate networks, and even they can use it to launch DOS or DDoS attacks. And that's the thing that uh, the number of interconnected devices is increasing every day providing users with convenience and access to the information. However, uh, however the attackers uh, uh, can also take advantage of the security vulnerabilities which are present in the devices which are the IoT devices and particularly vulnerable um, uh, with the uh, Mirai malware uh, which is being used uh, to launch multiple DDoS attacks and it was used in 2016 as well. Um, as IoT continues to grow, security professionals must educate others about the importance of the basic security measures to protect against these kind of attacks. Now next we will see that uh, what are the wireless hacking tools and uh, why are they so successful. Now before we'll cover this wireless hacking tools, I'll show you a couple of websites and tools which are used in order to hack the wireless networks. First of all, we have Kismet. Uh, it's a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, radio frequency and more. It sniffs the network and it uh, helps you in uh, um, uh, penetrating in the wireless networks. Um, as you can see, it's even available on GitHub and others, so you can get the details for this one. The, uh, the other one is Stumbler, uh, which is also used for wireless networking and hacking, etc. Um, then we have the tool like uh, Homedale. It is for Wi-Fi and uh, wireless LAN monitoring, etc. So you can see the signal strength and even the encryption mechanisms on this one. Further, it is even showing you the channels on which 
a specific wireless is operating then we have metageek which is insider um, it is a uh, defeat to a slow wi-fi and uh, you can see their products and the um, things that would help you in understanding the overall strength and the weaknesses of your network um, then we have uh, another one for the core security um, which helps he us in identifying the normal problems that we have as far as security of our network is con concerned. Then we have GFI LandGuard. It would protect us from uh, any sort of penetrations which are taking place and it gives you a very good interface uh, with the help of which you can see that what is actually taking place on your network uh, while um, Wireshark helps us in uh, scanning the network traffic capturing the packets and even helping us in understanding that uh, um, what are the different protocols being used and if someone is using any tools like that in order to penetrate in your network and the last one is Ubertooth One. Um, it is one of the hardware uh, platform and the project, uh, and it supersedes the Ubert Zero. And it's currently a preferred platform which is used um, in order to protect your network and things related to that. So we have another tool like uh, Homedale, a freely available tool locating at 2.11 wireless networks uh, designed to detect uh, any at 2.11 ABG and ACX wireless network and it can operationally use the GPS location information um, and the information on the map and the location access points etc. Um, as uh, in insider program as we just showed you in one of the websites it inspects the wireless and surrounding networks and troubleshoot the, um, the competing access points who are also transmitting the signals on the same uh, channel then it tracks the strength of the uh, received signals in dbm uh, which is decibels over the time it filters the access point in an easy to use format and it highlights the access point areas with the high wi-fi concentration so the areas in which the concentration is low you'll be able to install new access points over there we call it a heat map as well now experts from the Wi-Fi and GPS data uh, to a uh, keyhole markup language which we say as KML file to view the Google Earth etc. Now here as you can see in this uh, point they are giving the name of the access point its MAC address the vendor and the signal strength of this one and if uh, the signals are flowing and what's the encryption mechanism used on that and uh, what's the mode of it further the frequency on which it is operating so you can see that it's a channel 5 and it is uh, transmitting it on 2.4 gigahertz or in the other side it's using a channel 44 which is uh, on 5.2 gigahertz that's an another example of a tool uh, which is an insider interface almost the same interface where it is showing the SSID name of it the signal strength of it radios of it even the channels on which it is operating the uh, mode of it maximum bitrate and last seen that if it is still active or not so if you're looking at this side where it's showing all the channel overlaps etc if um, multiple uh, access points are transmitting the signal over the same channels you'll be able to detect it from here now we'll be looking at how can we protect our wireless networks uh, so first of all you can change the uh, default uh, um, access point security protocols now changing the default AP security also means that the default security on every access point should always be changed to deploy secure network components. Manufacturers provide guidance on how to configure their access points. It's important to follow their advice and mix its uh, experience with your own experience. Not changing the defaults on an access point can be a significant security risk as uh, the defaults are generally posted on the manufacturer websites and available to the attacker so it becomes very easy for them to attack such kind of devices which have the default credentials online. Locate the access points uh, to cover only the areas that it meet. It means that placing a wireless access point in a careless manner can lead to a potential security vulnerability. The access point should only cover the necessary areas and should not be located near a window or it may increase the broadcasting distance. Also, uh, positioning an access point near the source or electromagnetic interference can also result in unstable or unavailable access points. Then we have used wireless directional antennas uh, such as Yogi antennas etc. which would provide us a better connection and signal strength.
Now again, educate employees about the dangers of installing the rogue access points. To prevent and uh, deter the rogue access point, employees must be educated and made aware of the dangers of installing or connecting to unauthorized access points. Site surveys using tools such as the Homedale and Insider Kismet and then the commercial wireless site service packages can be uh, performed to detect the rogue access points. The first line of defense is to educate making the employees aware of the company controlled access points and the risk of connecting to unknown access points. So unprotected uh, or uh, use of protection for the uh, transmitted data, you can use WPA, uh, which is a known standard, then Wi-Fi protected area version two and three. And uh, by configuring the uh, the encryption mechanisms on your Wi-Fi wi -Fi access points would play an important role in protecting your uh, network online. Now let's try to understand the uh, uh, the basics of WPA um, or the uh, the information which is related to that. Uh, first of all, try to understand that WEP is a weak and outdated wireless network security technology that was available on first generation wireless networks, but has now rarely used because um, it is only marginally better than having no protection at all. Despite being designed to uh, provide the protection, WEP poor implementation resulted in the use of the weak keys and the making uh, vulnerable of the, uh, the simple crypto analysis. A WEP uh, passphrase can now be broken in minutes, we can say rather seconds, that in 30 seconds we can easily penetrate on the security of WEP. Now, if we talk about WPA2, WPA is a stronger security technology designed to replace WEP in wireless networks. It offers better encryption and key management and is supported on most wireless access points manufacturers like uh, who produced these devices after 2003. If an access point offers the ability to use WEP or WPA, WPA shall always be selected over there and then you look for the latest one in that if it is two, three, four or whatever, choose the latest technology that you have in that uh, context. And in the last we have used media access control. Media access control address the filters is a method to restrict the access control on a wireless network. It works by recording the MAC address of wireless clients and registering them on the access points, thus limiting the clients only to the systems that they have their MAC address pre-registered. Uh, in most of the universities, uh, what they are doing is that you are allowed to register three or four devices on the network. So instead of giving you a username and password, they'll note down the MAC address of your devices. So whenever you'll walk in with your device, they can recognize the MAC address and you'll be able to connect to the wireless network without being authenticated. Now, after that, that's the end of this, uh, the uh, chapter and the summary of this chapter is that the wireless security and technologies uh, we have covered in it, uh, different threats to the wireless networks and different wireless hacking tools and how can we protect the wireless network. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.